Okay, here we go. Hello, Eric, and hello, everybody in the Bright Group and on the Balanced View page. We're super happy and excited to be again with you today. Thank you, Eric, for joining us. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to be with you. Thank you, Jochen, for inviting me. It's lovely to be here. Wonderful. And as you may have seen in our announcement, this this week's topic, we've crafted that in reviewing many of the questions that we have received uh, in recent years. And thank you for your thumbs up and your hearts. That always helps us to know that everything's going well here. Uh, also, let us know where you're calling in from. We always love to know that. And if you have any questions while Eric and I are talking, put them in the comment section as well. So as I was just saying, we crafted the topic for this call because many of the questions basically have um, an, a, a similar underlying belief system. And the belief is one of, you could say, of, of scarcity and of lack, that we don't have enough. And once I have enough, then something really great will happen. And, and the enough of varies. It could be enough health, enough money, enough friends, enough love, enough self-confidence, but um, whatever we're chasing after, you may have noticed it's really difficult to have enough and to keep enough so that you're always happy and um, fulfilled. So what we wanted to do today is really dissect this topic on, and Eric kindly volunteered to be our guinea pig here. Thank you, Eric, uh, to, to really show how we we don't have to be limited or a slave to this belief system and keep perpetuating that hamster wheel of always chasing more without ever arriving at a conclusive, definitive, decisive end to that seeking and that thirst and hunger uh, to have to have more before we can just relax and be at ease exactly as we are. So, uh, Eric, let's go briefly to your history maybe in your involvement in the training so that everybody who doesn't know you here has a, a, a context for what you're sharing with us today when and how did you come across balanced view and like how were you dealing with these topics that i've just mentioned um in your life at the time thank you so much i discovered the training um six and a half years ago now and um i there was a friend of mine who had um, discovered it in india and then shared about it and i was fortunate enough to have a local community in stockholm so after listening to training to some media online i went to an open meeting there and it took off from there um and um <clears throat> my approach to these topics beforehand um, was very much, I, I would say hoarding would be one of the, the, the strategies I used. Um, as an example, when it comes to money, um, I was running a successful business and was also part of a, of, of a company um, working with sustainability communications and very successful Fully conventionally and also contributing in a really in a really powerful way if you look at it um, from a conventional perspective and and uh, also making a lot of money from that so the only thing was that it was never enough no matter how much no matter how much uh, was on my bank account it always felt like there was never enough and I um, it was just like this this fear of losing it basically constant fear of of um, of what will happen to it how can i hold on to it how can i make more so that i'm um that i feel safe all of these kinds of thoughts and emotions were just running through and and there was never even in the moment which is fascinating you know even in the moment of like um getting a new client and signing off a deal of a few hundred thousand dollars or whatever still there's just that sense of like we should have charged more um it, <laughs> it um you know we we're worth more there's there's um they don't fully see how much we contribute um 
and also to the other extent or just like on and on with just all kinds of thoughts in it uh, around it so i would say this it, it was just never any settling in any way even if conventionally i had everything in place um so and so if if i hear that right you actually had the skills to like that you know many people would think once i have these skills then everything will be okay but what you're saying is you had the skills they actually worked you made lots of money but even then it wasn't enough like for you to to no longer have those fears is were you aware of that that was the dynamic that was just that, that it kept going like or, or or were you just thinking well i just have to make more money and then those will go away or how how was that for you how obvious was this dynamic for you at the time well at that time actually i i had had some um insights into the fact that basically impermanence and the fact that there's there is no resolution in getting more but i also did not have any kind of uh, real real tools a real support structure to actually bring that about or, or to see the have stability in it so so even though well, i mean a few years before then it was more maybe complete just blindness to the fact that i you know it was just about making more money or it was about acquiring more things um, but i also i had a um, which was why i was so passionate also about contributing through um, sustainability for example because i had this deep deep passion to contribute which went beyond only making money for example you know it was such a it's always been a hard passion of mine to contribute to the world so i knew that there must be more um to fulfillment than solely the paycheck or the bank account and um so did the same pattern that you then saw did you see that that was also running in other areas of your life you you, you just mentioned money as 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 an area because i also brought that up as 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 an example how how was that in other areas of your of your life at the time yeah i would say i would say it's a you know the the basic um the basic belief system was definitely playing out in all areas so when it came to health for example it was just you know just having the the perfect body having you know be uh, being tanned having uh, <laughs> having uh, um you know a lot of muscles being just looking good was something that was really like just when i when i'm only there when i only look like those people when i when i've just got the six pack and i've just you know can do this or that then everything will be fine you know then people will look at me and and in a certain way and uh, will find me attractive or whatever so there's that played out there also also when being ill it would be you know when i get well then i'll be fine um when when this is resolved when this um illness or whatever it was was resolved everything will be fine same with with relationships it's it's just the same dynamic playing out when i have the perfect relationship it will all be perfect and then no more there will be no more looking for anything outside and and i i must say you know i've there was even at a quite a young age i would say there was still sort of seeing through that to, to realize like well is that really working for anyone you know is it i couldn't really see it working for other people either so i knew you sort of scratch the surface and you see that there's it's empty behind but yet wasn't really seeing around me any other way of doing it either so there was a lack of of alternative options it, that that you had access to basically yes mm -hmm. yeah that i can completely relate i think for me actually it wasn't that obvious initially i just thought okay I, i've done my studies completed those in with just almost the good enough grades i should have been better but it was good enough to to get the things that i that i wanted as to the studies to have as a launching pad for that all worked out but then 
And then I thought, okay, now is the time that I like what I call build my life. So um, planning marriage, like then stretching out into like buying the house and getting the car and and midterm getting uh, the, the family planning going and all of that. Um, so for me, it was more in my in my late twenties that I thought, hmm, I'm I'm not sure where where this really is going because just like you said, no matter how much money I made, that was the most obvious. Uh, with money, no matter how much money I made, there was still this underlying sense of it it could be gone any any moment, and so. Like, like you just said, we have this same underlying belief system or that fear of loss, that fear of lack, that sense of scarcity, that there is something that we desperately need and that we don't have under our control. That's like that, that sense that I had. And uh, for anybody listening here today, if, if you're pretty new to this, I would invite you to make a list. You don't have to do that now so that you can stay with us. But after this or when you're, when you're watching the replay of this, make a list of all the things that you think you're in the process of ticking off. And once you've ticked them all off, then you'll be all right. Then you'll have a life of fulfillment. Then you'll be happy. You'll have no more fear. Um, and all the other dreams that you're attaching to it. And just write them all down and then take a good look and see like, who do you know in your surrounding, in like in your circle of friends or family who has actually checked off all these points and then has the result that you're hoping for. When I did that, I knew I had to look elsewhere. <laughs> <because> <laughs> Not only did I not really believe that I would ever take off all these things, I I didn't know anybody, like not a single person, not even my therapist, who could say I've ticked all these things off and I'm I'm happy, fulfilled, and confident um, at at all times, and and not dependent on the bank statement or something like that. So, um, how how did you take that from there? Like how when when you had that recognition that that there is should be more but you didn't quite know what that would be how how did you go about like solving that like did you just wait until your friend came from india <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you know well, it would knock on your doorstep at some point or how how did that work for you well <clears throat> i had a very strong um driving force um to know reality to know reality as it is and to really um, come to live life to the fullest and really have true fulfillment. I, I, um, some of you may know this. I, my mother passed when I was very young and, uh, and that drove me into a, a search for, for stability and, and, um, just life satisfaction that went beyond this the material it became basically that at, at the age of 11 i was introduced to impermanence at a like in a very powerful way and just like fully understanding that there is no ultimate um there's no holding on to anything even though um, my mother passed basically that was it just took the carpet from under my feet and um i in my early 20s i i went into a, a depression and and you know looked for many in through many ways to try and find stability in that and and one of the things was conventional like psychology uh, psychotherapy and then coming to a point when it was really clear to me like this digging more into my my past won't give me the tools that i need to live a life to the fullest, to live a fulfilling life, have mental and emotional stability. And I couldn't, like you said, I couldn't see it in the, in the psychologist either. So I, that sort of pushed me into seeking something else. So I spent some years um, roaming the streets, looking for the, for the solution to, to live a life which is uh, free from suffering, which is a life of complete abundance that I, I read about and heard that other people had, but I just didn't really have a, I couldn't see it in my, 
near surroundings. So I was really looking all over for it online, looking in, I spent a lot of my time in libraries, reading old books and, and very diligently practicing um, different kinds of traditions. Um, yeah, really full on um, searching for, for, um, for this thing that I, I, I knew was out there, but I just didn't know where to find it. Mm, so you were really determined. <laughs> I was very I determined. Tell. It's uh -huh. one of my it's one of my uh, amazing strengths is that I when I set my when I set my eyes to something I I'm very determined and I make a plan and then I follow through. So mm -hmm. uh, so it's it has it served me cuz eventually I found found what I was looking for. Great. Well, let's talk about that after <laughs> after looking at the hardship and and the the frenzy almost of like seeking and really like looking everywhere. So you went to the open meetings and um, or the open meeting. I don't know in 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 Stockholm, and and what happened from there and and how maybe you could also share in relation to the topics that we've just opened up around like sure. finances or other relationships or where you were just looking for that sense of abundance and, and fulfillment. Yeah, so one of the, the, the most powerful things for me that I uh, realized when I came to, my, op to the, my first open meeting was they really, the people there, both the trainers and the participants really lived what was, what was read about and what Candice shared about in the in the video on in the in the meeting and because uh, I'd been to so many different in so many different circumstances where I found that there was a glitch between um, what was what was read or the the practice but then actually what was the rela the everyday relationships between the people in that place so here I suddenly came to a place where the the community that I met there was just such a loving, open, open-hearted, welcoming, um, respectful community, um, and that really it just it just said so much about it actually working. It wasn't just theoretical; it actually worked. So what I did then, uh, again going back to me being a very uh, a goal getter, is um, is that I. Um, I, I looked on the website, checked what's the end point, um, how do I get there the fastest, and then I and then I just follow the steps. Um, so, introductory meet, introductory training um, to be able to participate in the empowerments, and the twelve empowerments was really the essential point where everything shifted. Um, <clears throat> The, 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 the 12 Empowerments is the foundational course in, in Balanced View and, and it gave me, really gave me the tools to, to take this into my life fully and really, really live a life of abundance and live a life of, of empowerment and, and of inner peace and stability. Um, and and um, what it did, it was like night and day, I would say, from, from before and after. So in terms of practicalities, I um, I was still at my old job, you know, still coming back then to Stockholm, and um, I had the great fortune of doing it at the center in Sweden, and and then I came back to Stockholm, related with the same people at at my work, for example. But yet, for me, the my worldview had shifted, and suddenly I experienced gratitude for things, small things in life that I hadn't seen before. You know, just just the the, the great honor and, and privilege and fortune of being human and being alive. Um, that in itself, you know, I, I could see the wonder of 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 this experience of 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 being human. Um, just like the magic of reality opened up. And even in it wasn't that I just, you know, it definitely wasn't that I had all positive thoughts and emotions, and that was where I saw it. Quite the contrary, sometimes I just, you know, there was an on onslaught of of negativity. Yet that that um, basic stability and basic life satisfaction and basic foundation that um, 
it is to be human was pervading suddenly my experience. Um, yeah, it's it, words like I would never use, I would have never used before meeting this training, like wonder, uh, magic, um, a blessing really, um, and and just um, such a such a beautiful, beautiful life. So practically coming back, coming into the office, um, working on client projects, having interactions in a similar way that I had before, but suddenly I could be um, respectful, I can could relate in a very powerful way, discerning, knowing when to say things. Um, I could appreciate um, the awesomeness of, of what I did of, of working in, you know, in big projects, global projects where we contributed to the world. Um, I could see the, the, um, the amazingness of actually being able to, to make a living from this and that that money could be used to contribute further to the world, you know, to put that money into places where, where they, where they benefit others. Um, so suddenly money as an example became instead of this thing that I wanted to hoard and, and hold on to, instead it became more like a flow of, I would even say like a flow of energy, you know, like a flow of, of a resource that can be directed towards things that I want to contribute to. So it's no longer like my bank account and, and holding on to that. Instead, it's more like the, it's more of just a, um, seeing how money comes and goes and, and I, where I want to, where I want to pour it into. And, and also one of the main things which, which shifted over time is that I, I really just looked at how do I want to use my time? You know, how do I really want to contribute my time, my strengths, gifts and, and talents in this world? And that also meant that over time I shifted my, my work situation um, to really pour my time into the things that I, that I love rather than waiting for to be happy in the future. You know, when I've worked 30, 40 years um, and, and then will be, um, you know, save up for, for pension and, and, and wait for happiness. Basically I've, I just look at how I can, um, live a life where I'm, where I'm completely contributing now. And, and in that way also really have a totally fulfilled life where I'd, I can say that I'd be happy if I, if I would die tomorrow, I would have lived the, the fullest life that I could up until this point, I've really poured everything into just um, contributing to others and contributing to this world and, and also really contributing to myself in that way, because that's where ultimate, I find ultimate life satisfaction. Oh, so beautiful. There are a lot of hearts and love greetings here. Um, you know, the just listening to you, I can see that this is so like this isn't something you've read in a book. You can it's really tangible how you live that. What gives you the the courage or the trust that that you can do that? I mean, this is pretty bold and you know, it goes against everything at least I've learned in my family and at school, and you probably too. Um how how and and you said that you had an onslaught of negativity as well. It isn't that you just had suddenly your your thoughts had changed from being fearful to suddenly being all confident. What what gave or gives you the confidence, the trust, the courage to to make like actual decisions that that not only inspire you but actually empower you to bring that inspiration into factual decisions, like how you make decisions in your day-to-day -day life that aren't based on scarcity, but that are based on that sense of abundance that you've just shared about? Well, I must say the the, the genius thing about uh, Balanced View, um, one of the, the genius things is just the, um, what I found also was really distinguishable from other things I had tried was the support structure that, that is available. 
So um, first of all, to have role models like Candice um, and like the other trainers to have support in that way from trainers who've gone before and can show how show me how how it is possible to to just have other people who live in that wonder and in that in that world of of abundance and and generosity and um, magic um, makes it. You know, I, I didn't even think this was possible before. Before, you know, it's it, if you, if I can't see anyone, if I couldn't see anyone around me having that um, or living that way, how how would I know it's possible? Um, so so that's essential. Um, the the guidance from from basically expert guidance from from people who've gone before and been on top of the mountain and and can show me the way up. Um, Secondly, having an unerring practice, um, like having just uh, access to to abundance, access to complete generosity in each moment through through the practice of balanced view, which is also something that I found before was difficult for me because I the practices I did was so elaborate or required me to sit sit on a cushion for hours and and suddenly now I have access to this. A practice which is available in all moments in the meeting room when I'm discussing, um, you know, how much we should charge for something, or when, when in a client meeting, or you know, together with friends or together with family, it's just constantly it's there. When I have health uh, things coming up, when it's painful. So it's it's that to have a practice that's completely immersed in my daily life is just immense. And then and then to have trainings, amazing trainings are available all the time, um, available to listen to and to practice or to to participate in, as well as our the wonderful community that is available in in Balance View, a global community of friends who are all excited to do the same thing. It's once I realized what Candice had put in place in terms of these four mainstays, basically cracking the code from how we learn anything in life, you know, I realized that, wow, that was how I learned design. Um, this was how I learned French. You know, it's, it's the same structure. It's just the, um, the brilliance of putting that together in this field because it, that was what I lacked oftentimes before i would i would see that someone would have the recognition that i was looking for but it was like they were sitting in in the water um describing what water what what it's like to swim but they never gave me the tools to swim so i i was always lacking that step of like action and also have not just teaching me but also having friends who to have fun with and play in the water you know it's just also life is just beautiful and fun and amazing so to share that with people from all over the world is is just such a, a wonder and and brings out this magic of reality for me so easily just complete immersion and and being with people who who recognize the same thing for me that's like it's the easiest way it's just showing i just need to show up um, participate, follow the instructions, and it's just easily, naturally, effortlessly coming about. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, I can relate from my own experience, but just the way you put that there is makes the preciousness again so obvious. Um, so ultimately, with the tools and the support that you've just mentioned, what it basically allows you is to like on demand access, that sense of, you used a few words there before, like inner peace, confidence, assurance, um, abundance, whenever it's needed, like whenever there there is a sense of lack or of like, ah, I need to change something, I need more of this, I need more of that, you have an actual set of steps of tools that you can just like immediately apply and then there is the great settledness again so that's that's just it makes perfect sense that that would then also go into your like you said into the meeting room when you are negotiating a new deal or when you're struggling with the health 
issue. Um, how how did that, especially now looking at your relationship with other people also, like whether that's in your personal life in like personal relationships or business relationships, how did you, how do you feel that that impacted your, like that your own transformation? How did that ripple out? You mentioned in the beginning of our conversation, you've also been very passionate about like positive social and environmental change. So how did that inner transformation ripple out or effect impact your capacity to contribute and and what happened in these kinds of situations and meetings great question it's um i could notice very directly um the effect that this training had on my colleagues and on my in my work relationships um i I um yeah they they shared often how I you know that my contribution in projects was very precious to them and and that I could um <clears throat> like the stability that I had transferred to the others and in that group um just one person knowing that the the nature of reality knowing um knowing innate stability, innate peace as our, as the nature of reality and the way we live, um, suddenly the room shifted, you know, even though there could be tense things coming up, I could see and hear in them, they also shared very beautifully how, how that affected, they enjoyed working together with me and, and, um, and I, um, yeah, it was very I, I i they shared how it was very inspiring to see that um and and also just you know also because it, it was also a radical shift in some ways because i've i've been a person who especially when i was younger just took a lot of space in rooms you know I've, like in a meeting i would be very verbal um and then this training has given me discernment when to use my voice and when to contribute um, and when to allow others to, to to take the space so that was also something very noticeable for them because i would before then be someone who would just you know shout out whatever i thought and now i'm that is not the way i operate you know i'm 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 um, considerate with when to contribute and i just have an innate very clear discernment of of when to say things and when it's time to to be silent um so those were a few of the things that made me smile there with memories of my own conduct so <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't laughing at you i was smiling with you there um yeah beautiful i'm sure that that is and you know i know this from from knowing you for for quite some time and, and and working together and obviously also having the great good fortune to spend most of my working time with other people who also rely on on the same like the same capacity really that we all have as human beings the only difference is some have the means to tap into that and and other stone then when people come together like just one person like you shared but then when i've been even working in a group of people who bring it all together in that way it's just really beautiful you mentioned magic and blessing before so that's what it yeah what it reminded me of too mm -hmm. um i just had a quick look here at the time which is like rapidly progressing here so um in like where do you see this go for yourself you it 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 sounds like you haven't stopped at um you you haven't stopped at inner peace or at just being fine you know with yourself and with your circumstances you really want to bring this further you want to lift that and bring that into all relationships like where what inspires you to to keep moving forward and 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 where do you see yourself going with this like what is your what is your passion in in all of this what 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 makes you 
smile and 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 cheer up and and continue on really deepening this capacity that you've shared about with us today well as i mentioned before my like the ultimate role model for me is candice or then we're the founder of balance view and and her contribution to the world and and just her her way of being i i i'm so inspired always to just know her and see her interact with people and just the way she is and and really um i it is there's just this innate wish and natural spontaneous wish to to contribute to others and really to to share in this way that it is possible for people to live a life of total abundance of of complete life satisfaction of fulfillment in every moment of of um empowerment of peace freedom from suffering and and the essential point here is it's while experiencing everything that's going on i feel that is such an essential point because it's not my life isn't rosy in the way like from a descriptive level you know it's 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 there's just lots of things going on everything from health issues long-term health issues to um you know anything just mental states that can come up spontaneously without any kind of just you know how life is how the minds works it's just things come it's just part of being human um and just the fact that i have access to this complete abundance love wonder magic in the midst of all of this that is to me just it's just amazing it's just um you know it is a it is a wonder because if for everything else that i tried and everything else that i thought i would do i always needed to change something before i could have access to that so there was always a time in the future when um i would be fine and i never ride it it was just a carrot on a stick that i never caught and to now be able to live each moment with this um no matter what's going on it's i know that the rest of life aging death um sickness friends dying family members dying i know that all of this will come and i know that i will have complete inner peace stability life satisfaction and be able to contribute to them as well that is also so beautiful that i i'm not wrapped up in my own stuff which means i can contribute to others in a in a very beautiful way so i i inexhaustibility is a word that i had no idea what it meant or i'd even heard about before this training um but it is truly a life of inexhaustibility like whenever i come to a point when i'm like now i've got it you know it's just amazing can't be any better it always deepens it always opens up it always expands and it's so beautiful that there is no end it's not like I've reached it and now I'll just lay in my bed and hang out. There's just constant expansion, constant opening and also constant um contribution. Like I love I love being active. I love doing things. I love creating things, beautiful things, creating amazing things together with other people. um to change this world to really make this world um like to make it also externally uh, so a reflection of the inner beauty that we we all share you know so that we really take care of this place so that other people can enjoy it too and so that all people all over the world have this possibility of 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 really seeing their living as their true peaceful nature and and so the con- like it never ends i i don't see also when i see in you and in candice and in others like i see that there's no end to this expansion and 
And I, I'm so grateful for that because it's just so much fun. Life is just beautiful, fun, simple, and amazing. <laughs> what could I possibly add to that? <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric. That was just amazing. So beautiful as always to spend time with you. And yeah, thank you for also really dedicating your your own recognition, realization, this transformation. Not, you know, not hoarding that, but with that same sense of abundance, really giving it giving it all and shining with it. And I feel the same way that the more we give, the more the brighter it shines. So it really is it 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 is a win, 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 win situation for sure. Um, thank you, Irene. Thank you, everybody, so much for your comments. This was really beautiful to be together. Now, friends, for everybody here who is new with, uh, and, and maybe you've just come across this video and because somebody shared it on their timeline or something. So if this rang a bell for you, and especially if, if you did maybe the exercise before about making a list of the things you need to take off and you can recognize, wow, actually this approach could use some good looking at it, then we are offering free breakthrough calls for friends who haven't done the 12 empowerments and but are really curious to find out how what Eric and I were talking about today could become your own experience. Like Eric said, this isn't about learning a new philosophy. In fact, the philosophy you could write on a business card, it's very simple and straightforward. The, the point is to make that our lift reality. And if you would like to check just with somebody who is already having this experience, to look at your life together and seeing like what's working right now, what are the things that you're stumbling with or that you that you're bumping your head against then we're offering these calls to look at your life and then look at what the next steps for you could be whether they're the 12 empowerments or some other support that we might be suggesting or something completely different the call really is about you and about your next steps in life so we'll post the link into it's already there in fact uh bright.lc forward slash call. So book a call there with us. We're so happy to be meeting with many friends uh, from around the world in this way and can't wait to meet you there. Thank you again so much, Eric, for joining in today. It was a complete pleasure. And thanks, friends, for joining. Thank you all. Thank you, Jochen. It was so beautiful. Have a wonderful day or night. Bye, friends. Bye-bye.